welcome back to my channel 5 minute economics where i teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes the topic for today is types of market structures so of late i had been bombarding you with a lot of macroeconomic content lately so i thought why not get some microeconomic content on board this particular topic is actually a part of your 11th and 12th economics as well as undergrad level economics so i hope this video is going to be useful for you so in today's video i'll be talking about all the types of market structures monopolistic competition perfect competition monopoly duopoly monopsony basically all the types of market structures i've already made up a video on oligopoly and the king to demand curve so i wouldn't be discussing that in today's video i'll attach the link for that particular video in the comment section below so yeah guys let's get started also guys don't forget to like this video and subscribe this channel in case you haven't already and do follow me on instagram on my handle 5 minute economics before we go to the types of markets let me tell you a little about what exactly is a market so basically guys market is a mechanism or an arrangement through which the buyers and sellers are able to contact each other and strike a deal about the goods to be bought and sold so that is basically the definition of market and some things some features about market which you might not know are that guys Firstly, it not need to be a particular place, so we are not restricted to a geographical area. You know, it can be as small as a local market and as big as the world market. You know, stock market, any market. So it necessarily not be a particular geographical place. Secondly, guys, it's not necessary that the buyers and sellers have to be in physical contact with each other. We buy goods online, right? We're not knowing who the seller is or who the buyer is. We are just buying from that particular, maybe Amazon. We are buying, so you know, uh, we are not in direct contact with the buyer or seller. But we have a system of communication with each other through that app or through you know website or whatever we are able to buy. So there, that needs to be there. A system of communication with each other needs to be there. So these three are the features of a market. So firstly guys let us talk about a perfect competition market which in reality is probably a rare kind of market Number one feature is large number of buyers and sellers in this particular type of market there is a huge number of both buyers and sellers and since they are in such a huge number they actually have a negligible effect in the market Next there is homogeneity of the product so here this is a very important assumption the product which they are selling is exactly homogeneous okay so if as a buyer i would be going to buy i would be indifferent if i would buy it from firm a or firm b or firm c because all of them have exactly the same product number 3 free entry and exit of firms so you know there can be any number of firms who want to enter any number of firms who want to exit one small thing which i would tell not go in the detail of it because of this particular feature of free entry and exit in the long run there is only normal profits in a perfectly competitive market next guys price influence so since you know they are in huge number and since they are selling homogeneous products and because in a perfectly competitive market the firms do not have any authority to set the price the price influence over here is they are price takers and not price makers who is the price maker the industry that is all the firms together put together they are you know the industry the the price is determined through the market forces of demand and supply so all individual level firms are price takers whatever the industry sets the price the firm has to agree or leave it next is perfect knowledge so this is also very a uh, rare assumption so all the buyers and sellers know what's happening in the market they are perfectly knowledgeable about what's going on what price what product is being sold in the market next perfect mobility of factors of production this case means that you know the labor is perfectly mobile it can switch from one job to the other pretty much easily next no transport cost so this is a very important assumption guys when we are talking about a perfectly competitive market so for example you know i would produce a product here maybe in maharashtra and then sell the product probably in some north eastern states so what would happen is if i incur a transport cost of me selling the product from here to there the price might vary right so here this is an important assumption which we have to keep in mind that we are assuming that there is no transport cost because if the transport cost is included the price would would vary and we know that over here the price or the homogeneity of the product remains the same there is the same price at the you know same quality is sold in all throughout the market so this is an important assumption guys no transport cost actually there is no advertisement cost also in this particular market because everyone selling the same thing why do you need to advertise it lastly guys the demand curve for a perfectly competitive market is a perfectly elastic curve if you studied elasticity 
So you know guys here uh, we can see that AR average revenue or the demand curve is same. It is a straight line horizontal to the x-axis because you know everyone is ready to sell it at a buy at a particular price but nothing at a slightly higher price also. So we would not like to buy at a higher price because everyone's selling the same product. That's why the demand curve is a straight line horizontal to the x-axis. So all these are the features of a perfectly competitive market. So coming to our second type of market structure which is a monopoly. Here we have a single seller. A single seller means he is the only soul and hold of the whole market. Here the difference between industry and firm disappears because there is only one seller. Basically he's like the king of the market. In fact there are many buyers but only one person selling. For example, the Indian government has monopoly over the railway sector, right? It is solely, wholly run by the Indian government. So that is, uh, they have a monopoly on that. Secondly, no close substitutes. Close substitutes kya hote? basically anything which has, which can be used in place of each other. So for a monopoly to exist, it is but obvious that, you know, we wouldn't have any close substitutes. So railways, you would say, do have substitutes like airways or maybe, you know, buses, but the price or the comfort or whatever the railways offer, you cannot uh, substitute it with airways or buses, right? So definitely no close substitutes, closed entry. Of course, guys, here, uh, you know, for a monopoly to function, we wouldn't have entry and exit easily how we had there in a you know, perfectly competitive market. Here you cannot enter in the market because if you enter the monopolist will lose his whole monopoly. Um, there might be restrictions like legal, man-made, natural, anything you can say. I know people have patent rights, uh, copyrights, law laws, economies of scale, lot of things due to which the others cannot enter that particular market. Next, because I'm the king of the market, I will set my own price. Here I'm not the price taker, but I'm the price maker. And whatever price I want to keep, I will keep, you take it or leave it. Next, there is possibility of price discrimination. So there is also a thing like a discriminating monopoly where, you know, a monopolist tries to discriminate in selling the product. So since he is the king of the market, he has all the sole whole authority of setting the price of whom he wants to sell. So probably he might sell some people uh, at a lesser price or some people at a higher price. It is his own wish so he can discriminate the price and lastly guys over here the demand or the AR curve is not like how it was there but here it is downward sloping why is it downward sloping because the monopolist tries to lower the price in order to boost the sales since there is no there are no close substitutes available it is pretty much less elastic or inelastic that's why I've drawn it like this so this blue AR line downward sloping is our demand curve for a monopolist. So coming to a third type of market structure, which is a monopolistic competitive market, the name itself tells it that guys, this is a combination of what we've already studied. It has some features of a perfectly competitive market, whereas some features of a monopolist. So that's why the name monopolistic competition. Number one feature, just like a perfectly competitive market, here too, we have large number of buyers and sellers. So since, you know, there is a huge number of buyers and sellers, they would have very negligible effect on each other. The rivals would have very negligible effect. So therefore, there is large number of buyers and sellers. Secondly, guys, selling differentiated products. So everyone is selling differentiated products. So there are substitutes, of course, but not close substitutes. For example, let's take an example of the automobile industry. So we have so many companies in the in this particular sector, you know, be it Tata, Hyundai, Honda, you know, Toyota. Tell me in the comment section, which is your favorite brand for cars? But coming back to the automobile sector, every car has its own feature, right? There are something similar, all have a steering wheel, all have accelerator, brake, clutch, whatever. You know, all have something in common, but of course, all have their own different feature and that differentiates them from each other, right? So they are selling differentiated products. Again, here also there is free entry and exit. All the firms can come according to their wish and leave according to their will. And that is the reason why in the long run, a, a monopolistic competitive market will always have normal profits, okay? Next, selling costs, which is a very important feature talking about a monopolistic competitive market. What is selling cost? Selling cost basically means advertisement. So here, because every product is different, we would try our best to advertise our products so that, you know, our product is sold in the market. We might have the best of the brand ambassadors like Alia Bhatt, Deepika Padukone, whatever. We can have the best of brand ambassadors to, you know, advertise our product, which of course is a cost, a selling cost. We would incur a lot of cost in such a market because, you know, everyone is selling similar products. So we would want our brand, our product to stand out in the market. For that, we will incur selling costs. 
Next, non-price competition. What does it mean? As the name says it all, non-price competition. So here guys, we would not discriminate on the basis of price. Everyone is selling at 50 rupees. We are also selling at 50 rupees. But along with that 50 rupees, you know, maybe I go to buy a shampoo, I would get a free sachet of a conditioner or some freebie or something like that, you know. So not discriminating on the price basis, but on non-price competition, a firm tries to establish itself in the market. Next, there's price influence here. I am selling my product, differentiated product, right? I know what my price is. So cars of the similar range, you know, hatchback cars, they have similar range. But of course, everyone has their own price. It's not exactly the same of all the brands, right? So here I am the price maker. I can set my own price. Lastly, coming to the demand or the AR curve, so just like a monopolistic ma uh, monopoly, sorry. Again, here we have a downward sloping AR curve. Why? Because every try, every seller tries to lower the price so that he can boost his sales. But because there is non-availability of close substitutes over here, we see our uh, curve is pretty much more elastic than that was there in the monopoly market. So this red line is a downward sloping line, which is the AR curve, curve of a monopolistic competitive market. So we are done with the main types of market structures. Now briefly talking about few other markets. Next is monopsony. What does monopsony means? Here guys, there is a single buyer and lot of sellers of course. Entry and exit is of course not possible since there is only single buyer. For example, there are many people who are producing parts needed for an Indigo airline. But Indigo is a single buyer, right? He can purchase from anyone and he has the sole authority. So, but he is a single buyer and many people are selling. So this is what monopsony means. Next, we have duopoly as the name suggests. Duo means two. Two sellers are producing a particular product in a duopoly market. And lastly, we have oligopoly. Guys, this is a very important market in terms of examination point of view. And very few sellers are here in this particular market, which have intense rivalry, competition, whatever you can call it. And here the demand curve is kinked or indeterminate. I have made a detailed video on oligopoly and the type of demand curve in this particular market. I'll attach the link of it in the comment section below. That's all from my side, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was useful for you and I'll see you in the next video pretty soon.